And we bless Yahweh out of the house of Yahweh. If you have your 18th book of Israel uh, this evening, you can turn over to page 323, chapter 30. We'll be covering tonight the deep things of Yahweh, the hidden manna of Yahweh, is now being revealed to the house of Yahweh. And this was given uh, the 10th Roman month of 2018, Yaakob 22. And it just so occurred, it was the last great day following the great Feast of Tabernacles. And you can find that uh, sermon on Facebook if you want to fill in any of the details. Um, and that's what I did. Uh, because there was a section here he referred to a message that Khan Yehuda had given to, to support uh, his information here. So uh, we always have that to refer to. Okay, here on page uh, 323, Pastor greets us in the name of Yahweh. The peace of Yahweh be with each and every one of you. I don't think I said that. He says, peace and joy. My joy, Yeshua said, I give to you. So pastor is recalling the words of our Savior here where he spoke of this peace and this joy that he enjoyed and wanted to relate and to give to his, his uh, students, his followers, the believers at that time. I will give it to you. You've got to search for it, though, and find it. You find it more in service than anything, than you find it more in service than you do anything. Service, learning, teaching, that's where you'll find the real joy. And this is something that we find in life that, uh, usually the things worth having and worth enjoying come with effort and oftentimes come because uh, others have done uh, work, diligent work, to make that experience a joy for you. The other, which is what he's referring to is the excitement of the world, it's there for a little while, and then your life is empty because you really haven't acquired anything that, that will uh, correct your character. This mic is talking pretty loud to me. If it's loud to you, you might adjust that. Now, when we speak these lessons, when pastor gives you these lessons, he's speaking to you from scriptures. And you remember Yahshua, he often spoke or answered a question or taught a lesson referring to Scripture. Now, why do we always refer to Scripture? Why don't we just um, go off of our own ideas or inspiration? Well, in 2 Timothy, it has an answer to this in 2 Timothy 3.16. I'm just setting the stage here to explain why we use the scriptures to support these points and this information that we bring. All scripture that is given through inspiration of Yahweh is profitable for doctrine, for reproof, for correction, for instruction in righteousness. For the purpose that the man of Yahweh This word here, may, is the Greek word 5600, and we're going to look at that in a moment. You'll find when you replace that word, which is borrowed from the name of a god, if you replace it with words like can and will, you start to see the promises of Yahweh and the strength of Yahweh coming forth in these lessons. That the man of Yahweh will become perfect, or should become perfect, thoroughly furnished for every righteous work. So this is the purpose of the scriptures, and they are written by inspiration, and they're profitable for these doctrines, for reproof, and for correction. 
and for instruction in righteousness. That word may is the Greek word 5600, and it actually, uh, that's one translation that they've used, but it also means can, should, must, would, etc. So it should more correctly read that the man of Yahweh, you think of the, the result of a man accepting the doctrine, reproof, correction, and instruction of Yahweh, what is the result of that? And we see that in Yahshua and what the result was. It wasn't, well, it could or it might, uh, or if you win the lottery, you could. But no, it's that the man of Yahweh should or would or can become perfect. So you can be perfect as Yahweh. It's, and so, but it's conditional. It's not certain. It's not once saved, always saved, as some teach in the world, uh, in other uh, worldly religions, but you cannot do just anything you want to do and still satisfy the conditions for Yahweh's blessings, his gifts, his gift of salvation. Pastor's talking about peace and joy. And this should be uh, our, a goal and objective in everything we do to seek after this. In all our interactions, we need to actively uh, look for this in our actions and behavior. If we're getting feedback from others that's causing them to be upset or angry with us or we have miscommunications, you know, you know the common things that occur between people, then we need to look at this. In Psalm 34, verse 14, speak peace, pursue it, depart from evil, and do righteousness. This is an action, an activity, something that you actively carry out. The eyes of Yahweh are upon the righteous, and his ears are open unto their cry. So you see that uh, it says here to seek peace and pursue it, and that word pursue is, it, it doesn't mean you're running around uh, chasing after every wind of doctrine or chasing up and down the road after every church or every preacher, but it's, it's a metaphor, and it means to seek after eagerly, earnestly, to endeavor to acquire uh, this thing. Uh, verse 22 in Psalm 34, Yahweh redeems the lives of his own servants. No one who trusts in Yahweh will be condemned. And also in uh, Luke 15, In verse 21, Then the son said to him, and this is a condition that's common to all of us, Father, I have sinned against Yahweh. We've all been in this situation, whether it's to our counselors, uh, to the priest, to our own fathers, uh, whatever the case may be, whatever the case uh, was we've all been in this situation where we recognize that we have sinned as Adam did as all men have done since the beginning I have sinned against Yahweh and in your sight and, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son so you see a, this a very humble attitude here <coughs> This is not a person who's uh, up in your face and uh, going to tell you what it is. This is a person who has an open ear and an open uh, mind to hear instruction. Because of this attitude, the father responded in verse 24, for this, is my, for this my son was dead, but is alive again. 
He was lost, but is found, and they begin to be to, to rejoice. And this joy is found in act of service. For all of my life, I've been familiar with this word services because as I was growing up, as I told you before, you know, growing up in the church, we referred to it as services. We're going to services. Services is about to begin. And we use that here as well. I looked up that word service, services, and it means an act of helpful activity, serving food. I think pastors brought this out before. To make fit for use, to supply aid and information. And isn't that exactly what we do here on the Sabbath? Seeking after the cares of this world is only um, temporary excitement, but it does not bring true and lasting joy. It does not bring peace of mind, and it does not bring the answers and the solutions to the problems that we face in life. Remember, the problems we face are trials and tests that are meant to be overcome. They're not meant to be insurmountable or, or something that can't be dealt with. They actually have an answer and a solution and a, and a way to, to deal with them. And the result of that is building your character for something far beyond this, this present life. It's a future that we're, that we're concerned about because we don't have eternal life in these bodies, do we? And there's something I say to people, you know, when they're looking at the, the cares of this life, the joys of the, the so-called joys of this world, uh, and especially those who would leave the house of Yahweh to pursue these things, I always think if what you're seeking after is truly joyous and, and truly satisfying, then why would you not want to enjoy it for the rest of your life, for all eternity, if it's that great? You know, you can check yourself. If there's something that you're thinking of doing and you ask Yahweh permission and let Yahweh in on your plans, who is going to be likely to go off after something unlawful if you first ask Yahweh? The first thing in the morning, uh, you know, do we ask Yahweh permission and, and give Yahweh recognition for our blessings and the things that we desire to obtain? If your first desire in the mornings to, is to obtain something unlawful or something that is not beneficial, just to make a distinction, because there are things, habits and things we have that we know are not beneficial and that we would like to overcome if we could, and we can, but it takes a certain mindset. You know, if we ask Yahweh, it's you have a conscience. You have the spirit of Yahweh working within you. Uh, and you're, it's going to put you on notice very quickly that yeah, I, I, I really can't ask Yahweh for this because he wants me to, I know he wants me to do differently, you know. So then we can turn that around and ask for the, the strength of Yahweh to help us to have a better mindset and to start on that path to overcoming and to recovering from these uh, habits that we brought with us from the world that are no longer beneficial. You know you've done wrong, and there's no way to get uh, it back. The thing you do first is ask. Be sure you do that. Ask first. Don't go and commit sin and then come back and ask, uh, or, or, you know, come back and ask, well, what I did, was that okay? You know, you knew better at the time. You just needed the strength and the, the fortitude to overcome that desire. Ask first, and we'll guide you in Yahweh's joy, the joy that Yahshua gives. It's really important that we understand the point he's making here uh, about not being able to go back and undo. The past can't be repeated. It's, it's already done. Once something you 
have done is once you do something wrong, it, it can't, you can't undo it, that specific thing. But it can be corrected in, in the future or how you did that thing, if it's an interaction with others, you can correct that in your future interactions. If you've missed the mark, which is the meaning of sin, missing the mark or the goal or the, your objective, uh, which is righteousness and, and being lawful, then reset your aim and guide your steps to succeed at the next opportunity. Worrying about the past, you know, it's, it's not beneficial. It's something that the Peace of Solution teaches us that we need to let go of. Uh, you know, let the past, you know, learn the lesson from it, but don't drag it with you. You know, if, if you carried your um, sins in a bag, you know, and you kept adding to it and never emptied it, you know, you'd be really loaded down after a while. And sins do load you down. That's why Yahshua says, put these things on me. And there's more to that, you know, but it's, it's uh, releasing you from those past sins through repentance and conversion. Isaiah 43, verse 17 says, uh, who brings forth the chariot and the horse, the army and the power, which will be cast down together. They will not rise. They are extinct. They are quenched like a wick. Do not remember the former things, nor consider the things of old, the things that we knew in the world, the, our patterns of behavior, the things we were used to, our customs. Behold, I will do a new thing now it will spring forth, and we're going to look at that word springing forth in a bit here in another prophecy. Will you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and the rivers in the desert. You're always going to do great and wondrous things, um, both through Yahshua and in these last days when this work springs forth. about guiding your steps to succeed. Psalm 119, verse 132. Turn to us and be merciful to us, as is your way to those who love your name, Yahweh. Order our steps. Cause us to walk with steadfastness. This is why we ask Yahweh for inspiration, and we look to him for guidance in your law. And do not let any iniquity rule over us, Redeem us from the oppression of man. And we will keep your precepts. See, even here in this prayer, setting conditions on yourself. And then keep those vows, just as we did at baptism. Deliver us, you know, from this sin, and we will keep your laws, statutes, and judgments, your precepts, and listen to the priests. Let your face shine upon your servants and teach us your statutes. So let go of that, those sins that so easily entrap us <clears throat> and don't keep dragging them back. Get a plan of action and stick to it. Therefore, since we are, uh, Hebrews 12, 1, are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which so easily entraps us and let us run the race that is set before us with endurance. Yes, it takes endurance. You've got to keep the Sabbath holy. This takes effort. This takes endurance. It's something that you have to maintain. It's not just holy automatically. Yahweh sets the Sabbath apart as holy, but now you have to keep it that way. Because the Sabbath, keeping the Sabbath involves people and activity. It involves acts of service. As we're told in Jacob 2, verse 10, you know, if we break any one of Yahweh's commandments, it sets us up to be guilty of all of them. And this is what we first learned when we first started learning about confessions. And I remember the day that, you know, it really hit me. I was listening, I was at home listening to one of the sermons that had been brought out at the time. And, 
And Pastor, you know, spoke to this and he said, you know, if you have been a part of this, these uh, sins of the world, these murders, uh, and, you know, a most people don't think of themselves as abusers or as murderers. But he said, you know, if you've been in support of these things, you are guilty of all the murders that have ever been committed. And it just floored me, you know, to think that even by one seemingly insignificant sin that is nothing in the eyes of the world, you actually become guilty of everyone who ever committed that sin or anything related to it. And so at that point, those of us at that time, you know, and I've spoken to others had this experience, you know, it, we confessing as our, our sins was a, a really powerful uh, moment in our life because we recognized the gravity uh, of the situation and what we were uh, truly confessing and what we were letting go of which was a tremendous blessing. And it changed the lives of all of us. As pastor said, you know, that man, Yahshua, whoever the world thought he was, whoever they think he is in history, he was something because he changed the course of history from that day forward. You know, it was a powerful influence. And it, it's one of those life-changing experiences <clears throat> when Yahweh opens that understanding to you. Pastor describes here in verse 5 uh, his experience of studying and reading various scriptures and how over the years this built up in his mind and it stacked up in his subconscious mind so that it helped him later with his studies. This is part of laying the foundation. And this is what many of you are going through right now in your life. You might think in your mind that you want to be at a certain place in your growth, but the fact is you, you have to do your homework. You have to go through these experiences and build up that experience. It goes for, with our spiritual life as well as our physical jobs. You know, it's, it's the way life is created. So then he goes into the example here uh, with Philip and how he was taught by Yachanan. And by their conversation you could see that Philip was being taught and educated and he was asking questions and, and trying to learn these things. In verse 8, this is where he refers to uh, Kanye Huda's sermon. And in that sermon, he covered Daniel 9.27 and Re Revelation 11, two, through three, 2 and 3, where he was talking about the meanings of uh, well, the, the words used to describe the last seven years or the last three and a half years. So it was the week, the midst, the midst of the week. Um, and he also referred to Keska 4, 6, a day for a, a year prophetically. So a week, seven years, the midst, three and a half years, 42 months, 1260 days. All of these refer to the same thing, the three and a half years. And like I said, you can go back to that sermon and see uh, what he said on that. The people need to understand about the three and a half years because it's said in different ways and different phrases, but they all mean the same time frame. And this is something that pastor had to teach to us because it wasn't put plainly and it was written a little here and a little there in different ways so that his complete plan would only be discovered and learned by those who truly uh, sought that knowledge at the place where Yahweh has established his name in these last days. Now, in verse 31 of Acts 30, he encounters uh, a person who's reading scriptures and he asked him, do you understand what you're reading? And he says, how can I unless someone guides me? So he had that level of humility. It's like someone being called and ready to receive this instruction. But the important thing was is that he was allowing himself to be led. 
And that's the kind of humble attitude that Yahweh is looking for in us. In... uh, Oh my, I do have a ways to go, don't I? In verse 19, uh, he says, go back to Yachanan 1. If you look at the, now here there's a, 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 it's kind of, it's put out of order here. It's misprint. What he's referring to here is not scripture and numbers, not the book of numbers, but he's referring to number in scripture, a book written by Bollinger, where this, uh, he cites, um, I think 1323 came in it came up in the Gematria, but they split it up into the numbers 1323, looked that up in Bolger, and showed how the meanings um, link to this this point that he was making there. Um, The other thing about our studies and preparing ourselves is the positions that we're looking to receive in the kingdom. So remember, you know, we're in that learning time, we're in that growth period, and it doesn't all come at once. In verse 33, he talks about a word 2168, I told you about means to trim, which it, it, uh, it does. Uh, it means to trim as a vine or prune. But the word dress in Webster's uh, says to make or set straight, to prepare for use or service. Much like we were, I was talking about the Sabbath a moment ago, to put through a finishing process. In Genesis 2.15, the word dress there is Hebrew 56.47, meaning to work, serve others and Yahweh, and to keep. And this really carries the message that Pastor was bringing in this lesson. And the word keep was the Hebrew 8104, to keep, guard, retain, to keep within bounds, to restrain, that is to restrain yourself, to practice self-control, and to watch, as it says in, in Luke twelve thirty seven, to watch always. And so... This is the mindset of keeping the Sabbath holy. We're, we have to remember that we're training to do a job that no one on the uni- in the universe can do except us, because that's the job we're appointed to. That's what Yahweh's plan is. That's the purpose of Yahweh's plan in creating us and preparing it for us. We're training for that job right now. We're appointed to this task. And we see that in Genesis 2.15 in the meanings of those words, dress and keep. In verse 4 of Yachanan 15, Abide in me and I in you, just as the branch. And so what is he talking about with this branch? Well, the branch, verse 46, we find in Zechariah 6, is speaking of a branch. And if you look up that word, branch, is Hebrew 67, 80, and it means that which grew. And just think to the present time and what you've seen in the prophecies, what has taken place, what has come out of Yahshua and been established in these last days, what has sprung forth by the willows and the watercourses. And we see that in this word branch that ties together in Hebrews 67, 80, that which grew. And it's spoken before that in it, and it goes through some numbers, but I would think that it would convince anyone Yahweh has put this tag on any everyone in the house of Yahweh. It's like having you written in the book, the names written in the book of life. And that's exactly what is shown here in the meanings of these words and what's so astounding 
that Yahweh has described us so perfectly. And to explain this branch more clearly, I'm going to introduce our next speaker. Please stand and please welcome our next speaker to Great Con David Hawkins. Praise Yahweh. Praise Yahweh. Please be seated. Yes, we're going to talk, talk, talk some about this branch. Um, let's go to Uh, Isaiah, um, verse 40, verse 54, uh, verse 54. It says, Yahweh said, who as I will foretell these? I've seen where, um, a similar question was posed also, and it should have us to be thinking um, uh, because there is an objective here in in who in isaiah fifty three it asks the question, "Who will declare his generation and here it says, "Who was I will for foretell these who as I will teach you Philip and the Enoch as uh, the Kahan was talking about who is who as I will declare these since I did this in the beginning he said since I wrote all this out in the beginning who will do it in the end The understanding of the branch, brethren, is of paramount importance. And, you know, Pastor began to touch on some, some subjects in Matthew 24 when he spoke about um, a warning where he said, Uh, Yeshua was saying it would be said in these last days um, he's out in the in the desert or he's out here he's out there so that's kind of giving us an indication that we're going to see something like that in these last days and if you're not fully grounded and fully um, studied in what makes us separate, what makes us different, what marks us, what identifies us. And Yahweh has given us so much to so that we would not be persuaded otherwise. These things are not just being done. Yahweh is not allowing these things to be done in his house for games. It's our life. Because he has foretold that there will be a pull. And if you're not fully grounded, you will get swept away. So who will declare it from the scriptures? Let them, notice it says, let them, the two witnesses do this, he said. Let them foretell them. Don't take yourselves away from me pastor says don't take yourself away from me you see there are people and organizations who would love to have the name house of Yahweh you see I tell you the name Yahweh is being uh, used but just because the name Yahweh is being used by others should not cause any of us to gravitate towards them and, and we'll get we'll touch on that 
some more. Let's continue. It says, Behold, um, it says, Don't take yourselves away from me. Let me do it for you, praise Yahweh. Behold, the man whose name is the branch. Speaking to Yeshua Messiah, he was saying, that, saying his name is the branch. Behold, this man whose name is the branch, for he will branch out from his place and he will build the house of Yahweh. That should be clear. Okay? Do you see the name house of Yahweh there? He will build the house of Yahweh. This is why, you know, b- believe it or not, when, when um, people begin to see that it, should, it shouldn't say Lord there, right? The house of the Lord. And you could see clearly, and you see how, how Yahweh allowed his name to be removed from the scriptures. Okay? He hid it. Yahweh is the one who hid it. So that nobody else will see it. Until these last days when it was prophesied to be established again. And he gave it to the branch. To establish it. At a time when not many was really interested in that. You see? Is that a coincidence? It says, are you still looking for another? Notice what Pastor is saying here. Are you still looking for another? I could get you a few of them and they'll teach you to keep Sunday, Christmas, Halloween, Easter, and all of those fancy things to take you away from Yahweh. What I'm telling you here is not just keeping Sunday. Keeping Sunday will probably not cause anybody here to fall. At least not initially. You know, because when, when, when we allow Yahweh's spirit to, to go so low within us, we can end up with any kind of thoughts. <laughs> Believe it or not. We can end up with any kind of thoughts. But besides these things which a lot of people are aware of, you know, Christmas, Halloween, and Easter, that they are pagan. They are, they are those that are recognizing that, but they are also using Yahweh. You see? So you could see if, if, if we're not grounded to understand there is only one place and um, it's being led by the witness, the branch, they will never get that. They can't compete with Yahweh. You see? They're all over the world. There are television sets that they won't uh, gripe about at all. In other words, things going on the, 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 on the media that they're not going to complain about. But you see, pastor, he has a job. He's a um, rubber bell. Okay? Right? And he's on the tails of the Catholic Church. He's constantly going at it. You see? They won't complain about the things um, uh, coming from the Catholic Church the way Pastor does. Because Pastor has been assigned to do this. There are um, telephones. You can put your own naked bodies on and show them to other people. These things are all over the world and those preachers won't say a word about it. Some of them is just soothe you, <laughs> you know, and they have these big mega churches and they just soothe you. That's, you know, say, say nice things to your ears. You come to Israel Hawkins and he will chew you out. That's what it says. He, he, he will chew the sin out of you. <laughs> okay. He'll tell you to get back on the right track. You see? We don't want to be away from that because we want to be spotless. In verse 57, these, um, and which he's quoting here from Zechariah uh, 6, verse 13, it says, Yes, he will build the house of Yahweh. See how he reinforces it? He will build the house of Yahweh. He will 
bear glory. He will bear glory, bear glory. And and this glory has to do with his name, but it has to do with his laws as well. You see, I will I will carry glory in my hands. <clears throat> I carry glory in my hands. And he's talking about the book of Yahweh there. Um, I will hold it up to you all the time. I carry it in my mind and my, and my mouth. I push it out to you all the time. Yes, I bear glory for Yahweh. That's what that means. It means to pick, up, pick it up and carry it and give it to others. Dish it out and teach it. This is what... Um, you get with the house of Yahweh, brethren. It's a true blessing to be called in these last days to the great house of Yahweh. Pastor said, it's an honor. It's an honor to be tested in the house of Yahweh. You know, and I've said this before. You know, they have Ivy League universities that offer you, you know, different degrees and, and so forth. And um, you you feel real nice if it comes from Harvard or, for, or from Stanford or from Yale or one of those. And in their course of study, they have tests, okay, before you are approved at the end, right? Well, here in the house of Yahweh, Yahweh's university, there are tests. And we are given tests ever so often, okay? And uh, sometimes you barely pass. Sometimes you ace it. All right? And uh, that's what we want to do um, all of the time. We want to ace these tests, right? So that when we come out, we get a nice score, right? Think about it like that. Think about it like that. Yes, I bear, I, yes, I bear glory for Yahweh. That's what it means. Verse 58. And will sit and rule on his throne. He will be a priest upon his throne, and the council of peace will be between them both. And um, uh, remember what uh, Yahweh said in Isaiah 42 about this glory. He says in verse in verse eight, it says, "I am Yahweh. That is my name and my glory. I will." not give to another, nor my praise to graven images. He's only going to give it to the one whom he said he, that is prophesied to receive it. You see? Between him and Yeshua, between, between them both. Now back in um, uh, Yachanan 15, now we're looking at what comes from the scripture in in uh, Numbers 13, verse 23, now, Pastor was really talking about the branch here, and that scripture there in Numbers 13, it was talking about when the scouts went to scope out the land, and they they used, um, they they picked a branch. Uh, they, they picked what we would call a bunch of grapes. But this these grapes are so huge, they had to, two guys had to carry it. Okay, on a pole. And um, it mentioned the word branch there. So that's why Pastor mentioned it. He's going to talk a little bit more about that. In Yachanan 15 verse 4 it says, Abide in me, Yeshua said, and I in you, just as the branch cannot produce fruit by itself. And what do you think it's talking about there? Abide in me. It's a word that starts with you. Unity. It's talking about unity right there. You see? Now, there's no other organization outside the house of Yahweh that is in unity with the house of Yahweh. Okay? Um, so that right there should tell you. In order to be in unity with, with Yahweh, with Yeshua, with the branch, you have to be connected to the branch here. It can't be anywhere else. And in you, um, 
just as the branch cannot produce fruit by itself. No, I've got to have Yeshua. I want Yeshua. I want Yahweh. They are what I want to give to you. They're in, they're the glory I'm bearing to you. Unless it abides in the vine, I am the vine, Yeshua said. Neither can you, can you unless you abide in me. I've got to bring the same message that Yeshua did. And that's what I'm bringing. The vine. And he uh, talks about the vine here um, in Strong's. It's uh, 2156 from 2168. And it's through the idea of um, striking with the fingers to touch the strings or parts of a musical instrument to play upon it to make music and you know who can sing this song um, if you recall that who can sing this song and we're singing that song you see it's a harmony we we have to harmonize we have to be in harmony okay you're gonna you're gonna hear a lot of sacred music um And he talks about, he's talking about the feast here. Let's jump around to um, verse 62. It says, The cluster that the people picked of the tree, in Numbers 13, verse 23, cluster is word 811. In the Hebrew, it means a bunch of grapes or fruit. It comes from 8.10 in the Hebrew. That word means bunch together stone. Scripture says, I will give to you a white stone. Um, the, the Christians really m mix this up. Um, uh, hopefully I'll get to that. So it says in verse um, 30, uh, 63, this word means stone, bunched together, a group, an assembly. It actually means assembly, a white stone. A white stone is 1074. Look it up in the, in the Yamatra and you'll see it's 1074. It's, it means acquittal. It was acqu acquit acqu acquitted, yes. I was acquitted, yes by both man and Yahweh. You have the same thing, brothers uh, and sisters. In verse 66, uh, Revelation 12, verse, uh, Revelation 2, verse 17, He who has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit, that's the law's, Yachanan, three, Yachanan 6, verse 63. Read it and believe it. The Spirit is the laws of Yahweh. Hear what the laws of Yahweh say to the called out ones. This is the white stone it's speaking of. So pay close attention. Uh, the called out ones, he's going to give you a white stone of acquittal of the house of, of, the house of Yahweh to him who overcomes. If I didn't preach the message, you would have nothing to overcome. But I do preach the message and I tell you, overcome sin. Don't give, give into it. Ask and we'll tell you which way to go. I'll give you, I'll, I will give to eat of the hidden manna. Keep that in mind the next time you see how Yahweh fed them in the wilderness. And we're getting that hidden manna right now. You might even take time to track it all the way through the scriptures. Much is said on it. The hidden manna. This book of Yahweh was hidden and written here a little, there a little. So they would stumble, fall backwards, and never understand Yahweh's plan. The hidden manna always um, it was it was taken away from them life was taken away 
This is life that we are reading. I will give to eat this hidden manna. That's what you're, what you're doing right now. You're eating what, the, what has been hidden for 6,000 years. Hidden for 6,000 years. And Yahweh is revealing it to those who have an ear. If you have an ear, he who has an ear, let him hear. Anyone who has an ear and, and can hear. So, so we, would, we would call you hard of hearing in Jamaica. We say, Boy, hard of hearing, you see. <clears throat> and we'll give him a white stone. If you look at the footnote, there we have it at the bottom showing you the meaning. Sentence of acquittal. That's what it means. That's clearing your plate of sin totally. Now, the way the, the Christians look at this, they say that they're saved. All right? They're saved. Once they get baptized, and say, I got saved. I got saved. Okay? And um, they don't understand the procedure. And Yeshua made it clear. You know, they're ma- being saved has to do with what they um, consider. They, the, the way they look at it is, you don't have to keep the laws. And you're saved. You, you believe, believe, believe in, in, um, uh, in the Savior, and that's it, you're saved. That's not what, that's not what the Scripture says. Okay? Yeshua pointed out how this operates. And the house of Yahweh is administering this salvation. Okay? And it works like this. Kepha asked, how many times shall my brother offend me and I forgive him? Seven times? Seventy times seven. So, every time it's an offense... Because the law is there and the law was broken. It's not saying the law is not there. They interpret this whole thing as if the law is not there. So, you know, there's no offense. Not so. And there's an overcoming involved of this white stone of acquittal. There's overcoming involved. It's like an eraser. Okay? And... If you get spots, you have to repent, confess, erase, and, in, and, and you need to keep your slate clean now. Okay? And you keep, you're working on keeping your slate clean. Yes, if you fall short, you can come, confess, and, and, and clean yourself again. Okay? But the law doesn't go away. That's what the Christians don't understand. The law does not go away. And through this process and enduring it to the end, then you're saved. You see? That's how it works. That's that's what it means. That's clearing the, the plate of sin totally. Okay? They would look at you and say, You trying to you trying to get eternal life by law keeping. <laughs> that, that's how they would look at it. You trying to get eternal life by law keeping. They don't understand the mix. Yeshua, yes, Yeshua was the only one who got eternal life entirely by keeping the law. Because he never sinned. And with us, because we have sinned, we need a Savior. But we, the Savior is not going to back us up if we sin it. It's just like the governor can pardon somebody or the president can pardon somebody. But he's not pardoning them so that they now have the right 
to come out and break the law that got them in there for the, in the first place. It don't work like that. Although they will possibly could do that. But the idea is that this person reformed and, and he's sorry and so forth and so on and the, the long legal process that they go through you know, he, he's not coming out to do the to, to do wrong again. You see? Okay, let's move on. Okay, so the house of Yahweh, um, we're we're restored, we restored the name, the restored we restored the book of Yahweh. We've done all these things so far. The house of Yahweh, this Little house of Yahweh has done all these things. This little house of Yahweh has done all these things. Praise Yahweh. So much things have been done by such a small group of people. A restored name, Yahweh written, which no one acknowledges except he who understands. And remember, the wicked, the wicked will not understand. It says, what that actually means is, he who nameth the name of Yahweh, let him depart from iniquity. We're the only, we're the, we're the only ones on the earth who acknowledge the name. The, the, the other religions, 4,000, um, 1, 4,199 religions do this uh, do in this same period that's the number of them so this was not a very long sermon um, pastor prayed and I want to read some of his prayer before we conclude here in verse 74 it says um, and this was like the last day of the feast uh, of course, he said, Our oh, oh, Father in heaven. Um, and go down to verse 75. It says, We come before you, Father, Father, knowing many of your people are still scattered out there in the nations. We see this in prophecy, and we know that Syria is named and Egypt the place where you first called the 12 tribes from. We know that they're coming. We know this is going to be in a very near future. We know the wars are going to take place. We see that. And pastor is not going to stop prophesying that and um, foretell that. That's his job. Yahweh gave it to him. He's going to continue doing it until it occurs. Okay, we need to understand that. We see that we see that the United States too is going to be involved in this. We're praying, and listen to this prayer, and I, I would imagine that um this is being is this being televised so that others can can we are praying, Father, for the inspiration for all your people. Show everyone that they've got to do what they've got to do, Father, to get ready for this and be ready to get to the house of Yahweh in a short time with the means to do so. Impress that upon them greatly. Pastor wants this to be um, impressed upon all those who are not here greatly. I'm telling you, I'm from New York, and I did, I did, I, I didn't want to stay there. If if this is what's in your heart, if it's in your heart to come to this place, the place where Yahweh placed His name, He will make a way for you. He will make a way for you. Okay, but it has to be in your heart. You have to want it. We are building a city over here. And all should, all of Yahweh's people, to the extent that you can come, 
come and, and, and I would say, put it in your heart to come. Okay. This is the place to come. This is the place to, to labor and, and, and toil to build up this city. Okay. We bless you, Father, for the great feast we've had here. And it's great here. Yes, you, 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 you'll hear a lot of things. Oh, and now in, in, in Abilene and so forth and so on. But this is where the university of Yahweh is. This is where we are tested for Yahweh's kingdom. And we can't enter without that test. Okay?